If you look into how I've shared footage of places that I've traveled to when I didn't necessarily want to lug around my big camera, you'll see that I've traditionally leaned pretty heavily on the use of action cameras, most of that being with the GoPro, which is why today we're going to feel a little out of place. We're going to be taking a look at a camera that comes from a company called DJI, and it stands out in particular because of two features that I feel like are potential game changers for underwater use. So we're going to be talking about that today, along with what I feel like are the best settings for taking these things underwater. So let's take a closer look at the DJI Osmo Action 4. Like any other DJI product, there's a lot of features that are packed into this camera. And there's a lot of great content out there that'll go into depth on this, so we won't be focusing on that too much here. With that said, there's two main things that jumped out at me about this camera, which inspired me to make this video. In the past, I've always enjoyed keeping a GoPro mounted to my dive mask. That way I get a first person perspective of my entire dive, but I've always dreamed of magnetic mounts that would allow you to easily detach your camera from your dive mask or maybe attach it to some other mount like a tray or some sort of tripod allowing you to get different perspectives and camera angles in the past i've gone down with multiple gopros to accomplish this and this feature may allow me to do this with just one camera aside from that the main feature that i want to focus on this video is the camera's ability to do an auto white balance underwater in my opinion one of the most important parts of shooting underwater is getting the color right as you go deeper into the water, the color temperature is going to shift from the warmer side of the spectrum down to the colder side. DJI has added a color temperature sensor that's located right here in the front of the camera, and this is going to help for the auto white balance to account for that change. And the claim is that with this feature, there should be no needed color correction done in post, saving us tons of time. This color temperature sensor is also designed to assist in transitions from going underwater to above water. Usually with other cameras, you'll see a slight purplish tint, especially in the sky. So I'm looking forward to trying this out as well. Without the use of an underwater housing, this camera is advertised as being waterproof down to a depth of 18 meters, which is about 60 feet. And that's pretty phenomenal compared to other options. I, on the other hand, will be keeping it inside the underwater housing for this test because I plan on going down to depths much deeper than that. And I also want to keep it pretty fresh in case I decide not to keep it. Now let's take a quick look of how well this camera is built. Now I wanted to talk about how this camera feels in your hand. As far as the way that it's constructed, it is very heavy, which is something that I love in electronics. It makes you feel like it's quality built, but on either side, you're gonna notice that there's two hatches. There's gonna be a smaller hatch on the left side, and that's gonna be your USB-C port. And on the other side, there's another hatch, and that's gonna be for your battery and your SD card. Now, as you're opening the hatch, you simply just push upward and you'll see a red line down here on the bottom of the camera that's telling you that it's no longer watertight, which brings me to a crucial flaw that I noticed while using these cameras out in the field is that when you're holding it in your left hand, just like I'm doing right now, and then you press on the record button, what's going to happen is your thumb is going to push upward on that hatch, allowing water into the battery compartment, completely ruining your camera. Now, if you're going to be diving with this action camera without the use of the underwater housing, I would definitely recommend using the cage that comes with it. That's going to prevent these hatches from accidentally coming open while you're underwater, keeping from ruining your action camera and making it nothing more than a really expensive refrigerator magnet. Now, speaking of those magnets, that brings me to what I feel like is a really cool feature about the construction of this action camera is because of the magnet that's located on the bottom of the camera, it'll allow you to stick it to anything that's metal, which I think is pretty cool. And now that the camera's running, I figured we could take this opportunity to do a quick audio test. What I'm gonna do is read through the settings that we're gonna be using on the underwater portion. That way you can get a feel for what the native audio sounds like that comes built into this camera. So of course, it's gonna be set on pro, the exposure is gonna be on auto, the white balance is gonna be on auto, color is gonna be on natural, and field of view, let's take a look at all the different options. In my opinion, as far as the best profile is concerned for field of view, it's exactly what it's set on right now, and that's called D-Warp. And you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of distortion here, but the only problem you're going to get is it may not be wide enough for underwater use, because when you're shooting underwater, you want to be sure to be able to capture everything within frame while staying as close to the subject as possible. Now, if wide is what you're after, you can always set it on ultra-wide, but there still might be a little bit too much distortion, so I feel like the best compromise here is to go ahead and just set it on wide. So that's what we're going to do on this test.
And on this other menu, we're going to be shooting in 4K at an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, shooting at 60 frames a second with the stabilization on Rocksteady Plus. This is what the stabilization looks like walking down these stairs when it's set on Rocksteady Plus. And just for comparison's sake, this is what it looks like when it's turned off. It's almost like it's completely unusable. The only other feature I wanted to cover was horizon leveling. This allows you to rotate the action camera while keeping the horizon level, making it almost like it's on a gimbal. However, when it's set on this feature, it does crop in quite a bit, so we're just going to keep it on rock steady plus. And at this point, I'm getting a little bored of talking about speeds and feeds, so let's go ahead and get started with our dive. Let's talk about how I feel about the results. After taking a look at this footage, I feel like the highlights were a little bit on the blown outside for what I prefer, yet the shadows were really clean with very minimal digital noise. The image itself looked incredibly sharp around the center and somewhat soft on the edges. 
Now let's talk about the auto white balance. I was really impressed with how quickly the white balance transitioned from above water to below water. However, the white balance did seem a little bit biased towards the green side, and at the end of the day, you will end up having to do some color correction. After getting the chance to try this action camera out in the Gulf of Mexico, I was pretty happy with its performance, but more importantly, what I want to hear is your opinion, so be sure to let me know in the comments whether or not I'm going to completely switch over to DJI or stay with GoPro. I'm still not fully convinced. I do want to say, though, but I did just get the GoPro Hero 12 and my next video is going to be doing a similar underwater review. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that content. And of course, I can't wait to see you on the next dive. Thanks for watching.